In this video, we'll be looking at families of polynomial functions. Uh, we're going to start by uh, well, taking a look at this graph, uh, this picture of this graph, and seeing what you notice about it. Okay, we might notice that um, it doesn't matter how stretched or compressed the curve looks, the curve is always passing through the same x-intercepts. So let's look at a Desmos animation to see how we can make that happen. Here I have uh, three different functions but all three functions have the same three factors, the same three x-intercepts. So an x-intercept at positive 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So they're all passing through the same x-intercept. The difference in these functions is that they all have different um, stretch factors. So one has a stretch factor of 1, another one has a stretch factor of negative 0 0.5, which reflects it. That's my green curve third one has a stretch factor of 2. And let's just look at what happens when I change these stretch factors. Look at how the curve is behaving as these stretch factors change. So they're definitely getting more stretched, but at the same time they're always passing through the same x-intercepts. So it doesn't matter what these values change to, the curve is passing through the same three x-intercepts. So even though the curve look different, looks different, they have some similar characteristics. So that lets us define what a family of functions is. A family of functions is a set of all functions that have the same zeros. Polynomial, fun polynomial functions with the same zeros belong to the same family. When we look at the graphs, the graphs of polynomial functions that belong to the same family have the same x-intercepts, but have different y-intercepts. Let's look back at that animation. When I animate these graphs, we can see the y-intercept is changing. They're not the same, even though the x-intercepts stay the same. We can write an equation for a family of polynomial functions that have different sets of zeros as y equals some k value. Our k value is our stretch factor times all of the factors, 1 up to n factors. And k is an element of the real numbers such that k is not zero. So how can we use this definition to solve some problems? Let's look at example one. Let's say the zeros of a family of quadratic functions are two and negative three. Can we determine an equation for this particular family of functions? Well, our general form is k times x minus a one times x minus a2, times x minus a3, all the way up to x minus a n, depending on how many factors we have. So the specific function, family of functions, would be k times x minus 2, times x plus 3. So this particular family of functions would have a general equation of k times x minus 2 times x plus 3. We can be more specific. We can write equations for two functions that belong to this family just by picking values for k. So I could pick a value for k, I could say k is 2. Or, I could pick a completely different value for k, I could say k is negative 17. Okay, so there's two different functions that belong to this family. But I could get crazy. I could pick wild values. I could make k equal to our value for pi. So 
that function, y equals pi times x minus 2 times x plus 3, still in the family. I can pick really, really small values. So 0 0.0001 times x plus 2 times x plus 3, still a member of the family, and I could keep going. The point is, if I'm being asked to write any two functions that belong to this family, I can pick any values of k that I want. Where we start to get specific is when we're asked questions like c that has a condition. Determine an equation for the member of this family that passes through the point 1 and 4. So I'm going to take that point and I'm going to sub it in for x and for y. So if my family is y equals k times x minus 2 times x plus 3, I need to solve for k by subbing in the point 1 and 4 for x and y. So I get 4 equals negative 4k solving for k by dividing both sides by negative 4 I get a k value of negative 1 so this particular function would be y equals negative x minus 2 times x plus 3 so we can build up into um, higher degree functions so a cubic function has zeros negative 2, 1, and 3 so an equation for this family would be k times x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. Write two equations in this family. Again, we can just pick values for k. So there's one family or one member of the family where k is equal to 3. k could also be a fraction. So k could have a value of 1 fifth. There's a second member of the family, 1 fifth times our three factors. And to answer part C, determine an equation for the member of the family whose y-intercept is negative 15, we just need to decode that. A y-intercept of negative 15 means a point at 0 and negative 15, which we're going to sub in for x and y. So y is negative 15, x is 0, negative 15 equals 6k divide both sides by 6 negative 15 over 6 is equal to k and then we need to reduce this fraction if we can I think we can divide top and bottom by 3 to get negative 5 halves is equal to k. So our equation would be y equals negative 5 halves times x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. So your challenge, or your task, could be to then sketch the graphs of the functions in part b and c. I would say do that using technology like Desmos. So just do quick sketches of these three equations in Desmos, see how they compare. And our final problem in this video, and one I'm only going to do half of because I'm going to leave the other half to you to see if you can solve. We'll take it up in class. Determine a simplified equation for the family of quartic functions with zeros plus or minus 1 and 2 plus or minus root 3. 
So, again, we're looking at y equals our stretch factor k times a 0 at x minus 1 times a 0 at x plus 1 times a 0 at x minus 2 plus root 3 and x minus 2 minus root 3. This is the factored form of our family. If I ask you to find a simplified equation, what I mean is to expand all factors. And that's the challenge I'm going to leave you with. See if you can expand this quartic function into simplified form. And we will take this up in class, start a class tomorrow, and see if we get the same answer.